We're restarting generators and running from a murderer. That's right, it's Dead by Daylight by Level 99 Games. In this frightening fight for their lives, two to four players take on the role of survivors who must devise a way to escape a harrowing trial initiated by a force known only as the Entity. Another player takes on the role of the Killer, who hunts the survivors and attempts to sacrifice them to the Entity. If the survivors can escape the trial by opening an exit gate before the Killer's sacrifice progress track is complete, they save their own lives and win the game. Set up begins with role selection. One player takes on the role of the killer while the remaining players control the survivors. In a group with less than five players total, some players may control multiple survivors. Players take their character identity boards, which include name and difficulty level, a turn reference, a blood point pool. Survivors start with two and have a max of six, while the killer starts with four and maxes out at 12. Perks have a name, blood point cost, flavor text, and effect. And killers have a special powers box unique to each killer. Some also have passive abilities which are active throughout the game. On each of the survivor identity boards, place a sacrifice progress token and give one survivor the first player marker. Each player takes a set of movement cards, a sneak, sprint, crouch, and vault. Additionally, the killer takes a wait card. Next, choose the game board for the trial, either Macmillan Estates or Autohaven Wreckers. Shuffle the props and place them face down on the board in rooms as listed on each. Props come in four types, objective, boldness, survival, and altruism. The players then each roll a skill check die and set their figure in the matching space. Then in turn order, each survivor reveals one prop of their choice on the board. Additionally, place the breakable walls on paths with distressed borders. Shuffle the item cards and place them in a face down draw deck and create a supply of tokens and dice nearby. Gameplay occurs in rounds, each divided into four phases. Planning, Survivor's Act, Killer Acts, and Cleanup. First up in the planning phase, the survivors will each select and place one movement card face down in front of them. The killer gets to select two movement cards, placing them in a face down row. During this time, the survivors can communicate, but messages must be public. No glancing or whispering, and if you talk, the killers have to hear you too. Next, the survivors act. In turn order, beginning with the survivor who holds the first player marker, each survivor takes a turn. On their turn, the active player first reveals their movement card and moves their figure to a connected space via a path matching the color of that card. Note that yellow vault paths are one way only. If any prop tokens are face down in the new space, the survivor may flip one face up. Then, in their new space, the survivor interacts with one revealed prop. All turns happen in that order, move and then interact. Survivor interactions include a prop and an action. Let's look at those actions. Rummaging through chess allows a player to remove the token and draw a card from the item deck. Items have a name, timing and effect, and the number of copies of that item in the deck. Survivors can only have one item at a time. Hide in a locker where they're hidden from interacting with players and are considered off the board for most game effects. One exception is if the killer opens the locker. More on that shortly. Spring with the crow prop. This allows the survivor to take a bonus turn, but at the cost of giving the killer one blood point from the supply. On a bonus turn, the survivor discards a movement card, using it to move along the corresponding path. If they moved, they may interact again. Survivors can activate multiple bonus turns in a round, but the killer can only have one bonus turn per round. That's what you get for all that killing. Drop a pallet allows the survivor to throw a pallet into the path of the killer, blocking their movement for a time. Repair a generator. This action allows the player to perform a skill check. Skill checks are dice rolls resulting in a one through five or a failure symbol. Any number is a success, but five is known as a great success. 
For the repair generator action, a success adds one progress token, a great success adds two, and a failure adds none. If a generator has three progress tokens on it, it's considered complete and is moved to the top of the board. Any time a survivor rolls a failure symbol, the killer gets one blood point token from the supply. Open and exit gate. Once all four generators are completed, the gates are powered. A survivor may perform a skill check when near the gate to add a progress token to it. Once a gate has three progress, the exit opens and the survivors win the game. Sabotage allows the survivor to place the entity token on the hook for one round. Hooks are the killer's implement for sacrificing the survivors. If a survivor was on the now sabotaged hook, they are rescued and the active player gains one blood point. Then both survivors may move along any path once for no movement card. Cleanse a hex totem. The survivor performs a skill check and removes the hex, gaining two blood points. Heal, which requires no token but requires another wounded survivor to be in the same space. The active survivor rolls a skill check and on a success, removes the wound from the other figure. If a revealed card has no legal movement for the turn, the player cannot interact with the prop that turn. Once all survivors have taken their turn, the killer acts. The killer also follows a move interact turn sequence, resolving their leftmost card first, followed by the right. The same rules apply to the killer, but their wait card allows them to stay in their current space and interact with the prop there if they wish. Additionally, the killer may use their power once per round instead of interacting. At the end of their second turn, the killer may spend four blood points to set a third movement card and then take another turn. They may only take one bonus turn per round. Some killer actions include Search an occupied locker. The survivor in the locker performs a skill check, and if they fail, they are picked up by the killer. On a success, the locker is simply removed. Scout with a crow prop allows them to remove a crow and gain a blood point. Damage a generator removes all progress tokens from a generator. Venerate by interacting with a hex totem provides two blood points. Attack. This wounds a survivor, placing a wounded ring below their figure. Pick up, which allows the killer to pick up an already wounded survivor and they can't have been wounded this round. They then try to sacrifice them. If there is an unoccupied hook in their space, that player is sacrificed and any progress token on their board is added to the progress track. If there is not an unoccupied hook in their space, the killer may carry a survivor to another space. The killer will give the survivor a number of dice to roll from one to four to move that number of spaces with the survivor in tow. They don't interact with tokens during this movement. If the survivor rolls any great successes, they escape and are no longer picked up. But if they roll any failures, the killer receives one blood point as usual. While sacrificed, the survivor's turn is skipped, so they better get rescued fast. Once the killer's turns are complete, the cleanup phase begins. For each survivor that is currently sacrificed, a sacrifice progress marker is placed on the sacrifice progress track, remove the entity token from the board, and pass the first player marker clockwise to the next survivor. Finally, all players take their movement cards back into their hand and begin a new round. Gameplay continues with survivors scrambling around the map, fixing generators, and finding exits. If they can repair the four generators and open an exit gate before the killer gains eight sacrifice progress, they win the game. And that's the basics of Dead by Daylight. In addition to this standard adept game mode, the board game includes two bonus modes for more experienced players, Bloodweb and Devout. Each of these modes allows players to customize their perks. If you want to see this game played, come watch me and my friends run for our lives on an upcoming episode of Game the Game. Check the link in the description below for where to find that, and thanks so much for watching Geek and Sundry.